What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the key takeaways that we can learn from this Chicago Bulls team across the entire preseason. It's not going to just be against the Milwaukee Bucks, it's going to entail the game against the Pelicans, the game against Denver, the game against the Raptors, and the game against the Milwaukee Bucks as well. Just kind of taking away some of the important aspects that we can learn heading into a very important regular season where we we don't get second chances, where every game counts, where we got to start off very well. We got to have all these things, all these issues sorted out from the Chicago Bulls perspective so we can have the best approach coming into the regular season. And there are positives and definitely a lot of negatives for the Chicago Bulls as well. It's not just going to be straight positives. Everything looks fantastic or hunky dory and stuff like that because that's not exactly what we saw. Yes, we walked away with three wins. Three wins, I think most people would have taken that at the beginning of preseason, but there are some worries there. So we'll talk about all of that, or at least a lot of the ones that I can remember off the top of my head in this video. Before we get started, please like and subscribe to The Bulls Show. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls entire preseason. Was it good? Was it bad? Could have been better? Could have been worse? I guess, what is your take on how we'll approach the regular season now once preseason is done and dusted, which it is now, ladies and gentlemen. The first key takeaway I want to talk about is the bench for the Chicago Bulls, because overall, the bench has been superb for the Chicago Bulls in preseason. In all honesty, I don't think our starting lineup actually did very well, especially certain guys in our starting lineup. However, the bench, in my opinion, has been the most exciting part about preseason for us because obviously our new signings are there, so you want to take a look at your new signings. But for the most part, they're the ones keeping us in these games, and that's going to be majorly important for the regular season. I thought our bench was fantastic against the Milwaukee Bucks. Granted, Milwaukee lacked the depth that we'd normally have, so if this was the main Milwaukee Bucks team that we versed, maybe the bench would have done a little bit worse. But altogether, our bench was superb against the Milwaukee Bucks. Our bench was was fantastic against the Toronto Raptors. Our bench was very good against the Denver Nuggets. And although the New Orleans Pelicans bench absolutely destroyed our bench in terms of production, in terms of all the statistics there, you could arguably say that a lot of our bench players, a lot of the guys that are not going to get a lot of minutes on this team brought us back into that game, which is considered the bench as well. So the bench in the New Orleans Pelicans game was fairly good as well, although it could have easily been a lot better and we could have easily um, had a better showing if we limited their bench as well. So altogether, outside of the Pelicans game, I think all of our bench production has been superb. That's obviously going to be big. Again, when the starting lineup comes in, you don't want all the pressure on Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan because if you put all the pressure on Zach and DeMar, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see Zach Levine chuck up shots that no one wants to see. You're going to see DeMar DeRozan play isolation and it's going to be a very predictable game which the Bulls are trying to avoid. If you have a stronger bench, a bench that can come in, bring energy, a bench that will come in and move for each other, will cut for each other, will pass for each other, will make things easier for each other, then all of a sudden the pressure's not on Zach Levine and the pressure's not on DeMar DeRozan and they can play a little bit more freely. They can play alongside of the system that we want to use as well. So having a good bench is extremely important and you want your bench to be so good to the point where if they were to start in some elements of the regular season, it would be A-OK -okay because of how good our depth would be if that was to happen as well. So Enjoy our bench production very nicely. Andre Drummond has been superb. Alex Crusoe has been superb. Outside of Goran Drogic, his first game, his other two games has been superb. I think everybody on this bench has been superb. And again, some of the guys that may have started in the Milwaukee Bucks game that would usually come off the bench has been very good as well. So important stuff there, ladies and gentlemen, and I absolutely loved our bench production. But one thing I didn't like about the Chicago Bulls preseason was our perimeter defense. I honestly think, in my heart of hearts, we could have done a lot better on the perimeter side of things on the defensive ends. Just my opinion, but obviously when you verse a Milwaukee Bucks team with five out and all of them are basically shooting threes the entire game, it is a bit frustrating when you see a couple of those open ones take place and they make them as well. Very, very frustrating. But even with Toronto, we left the perimeter open. It may have been a deliberate thing because Toronto are not a great three-point shooting team. But at the end of the day, the perimeter defense was still poor nonetheless there. I thought our perimeter defense was very bad against the New Orleans Pelicans as well. I can't really say too much about the Denver game. I don't necessarily remember how good our perimeter defense was then. But arguably, 
for the majority of preseason, our perimeter defense still needs a lot of work, which is frustrating because last year that was a very big problem. And I know we kind of didn't get many guys that could actually help improve this area, but you're still hoping that would be a little bit more effort than what we actually saw to stop the perimeter defense, to stop the perimeter shooting, um, to kind of hustle a little bit more, maybe get to your rotations a little bit earlier, and obviously help each other when things are not going their way. So we don't always see open corner shots. We don't always see guys open for three-point shots. Again, I can understand if it's a certain person that just sucks at the three-point line and, uh, and all that, and you just leave them open. I can understand that, but it is very frustrating to see our perimeter defense still being a key issue for the Chicago Bulls. Let's talk about the rotations that we've seen. So, basically, what I've taken away from this preseason is that Ayo Desumu will be starting point guard for the Chicago Bulls. He started all four games in the preseason. He's got his time there. He's adjusted well with the starting lineup. I think he plays a key role for the starting lineup as well, just doing his job, being open in terms of the off-ball opportunities, trying to be a playmaker on the on-ball opportunities, bring the good defense, bring his length as well, and just bring that youthful, I guess energy that you'd like in the starting lineup. I think he's going to be the starting point guard and playing all four games as the starting point guard will show that. And I basically, basically Billy Donovan kind of admitted it as well. That is Ayo Desumu's spot to lose for the Chicago Bulls. But the power forward position is filled with a lot of unknowns. I've got to be honest. Um, Started Patrick Williams in two games, started Javonte Green in one game, and then started Derrick Jones Jr. in one game. And I got a little bit frustrated about the Derrick Jones Jr. one. With all due respect, I just don't see him starting for the Chicago Bulls in the regular season. So it was a bit upsetting to see him just start for no kind of reason um, in, in the preseason. But at the end of the day, give him an opportunity, see how well he does. He didn't do terribly badly, but it's a very typical Derrick Jones Jr. performance. Uh, but Javonte Green and Patrick Williams are the guys that you're probably going to turn to as the guys that would be starting for the Chicago Bulls in the power forward position. And what I've taken away is that Patrick Williams has not had a very good preseason. He had a great game against Milwaukee, but all, other than that, all of his other three games, he's been very slow, not necessarily reacting to the plays well enough. Obviously, he's been lacking efficiency, but he's still trying to be aggressive. So he's trying to take steps in that aggression side of things. But in saying that, he's not been very efficient. He's not been very useful for the Chicago Bulls for the most part. I think we can all understand that. So there is obviously that conversation of who's going to start in the regular season now because even Patrick Williams with his bad preseason started the last game for the Chicago Bulls. And in my opinion, I think it's Javante Green's spot to lose. I think he's been the most consistent guy off of the bench in the preseason. I think he's been the guy that has also in the starting lineup contributed very well. In my opinion, if everybody to look out for. There are two guys that I'd look out for for the Chicago Bulls in this preseason. Nikola Vucevic and how well he's done for the Chicago Bulls as the starting center. And Javonte Green with just the amount of improvement we've seen from the offensive end on his half. So he's done tremendously well to really, I guess, play fast, fast tempo, 100% energy, hard work, and he's showing it with his talent as well. So Javonte Green, in my opinion, if you're looking at form, if you're looking at who's been playing better, if you're also looking at some of the qualities that we may need, I think Javonte Green brings that a little bit more. One thing I've also noticed is that, in my opinion, Javonte Green is the best cutter the Chicago Bulls have, whether it's diving from the baseline, whether it's, again, pick and rolls. He does a very nice... Um, I guess alley-oop layups and stuff like that. It makes him so unique. And he's always moving without the ball. He's one of the best on the team at it, I've got to say. And I said it last year as well. There's no difference there. So he's done fantastic, in my opinion, in that retrospect. In my opinion, it's his spot to lose. And I do think he adds a different element to the starting lineup. There might be some games where we need size and maybe those games we can start an Andre Drummond or we can start a Patrick Williams and maybe things will go a little bit better. But for the most part, I think Javonte Green will do just fine in the power forward position because he was just fine for the Chicago Bulls last year in the power forward position as well. We also saw uh, the cutting of uh, Javon Freeman Liberty as well. I guess he got waived, not cut necessarily. So we wish the best luck to him. But there are still a couple of guys that we don't know the future of. Costa Santos Acumpo, Malcolm Hill, and Carlick Jones. Three guys there that are still technically on this team and we'll probably know a little bit more about in the future because we don't have time to kind of keep them all. Some of them are, have to, are gonna have to go. Only one of them can remain. So keep your eye, on, keep your keep a lookout for that one. And that's a key takeaway for the Chicago Bulls. A lot of the 
guys that you saw, Malcolm Hill, Costa Santos Acumpo, Carlick Jones will not be here for the foreseeable future. Maybe they'll be in the G League. Maybe they'll be on a different team elsewhere, but they won't be on the Chicago Bulls because we only have one two-way contract spot to fill. We'll talk about the new signings as well, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, Goran Drogic and Andre Drummond. I think Andre Drummond's shooting threes was a very big surprise for the Chicago Bulls, but he's, but he's done fairly good in his three-point attempts, in all honesty. And uh, Goran Drogic, outside of the first game, has done very, very well. Very good at mid-range shooting. He takes his time. Again, he's still learning, in my opinion, a lot of the players and how they play. So I expect his assist numbers to continue to rise or a little bit get a little bit more consistent as well. And I think the new signings have done very, very well. And yeah, again, I, I've got to give credit to a lot of this bench lineup. Now, a couple of guys that I have been disappointed with outside of Patrick Williams. I have been disappointed in Zach Levine. I wish Zach Levine started against the Bucs so he could just get a little bit more momentum heading into that Miami Heat game. But Zach Levine has not been very good in preseason and I hope that can improve in the future. And yeah, overall, I think everybody else has kind of played their role in preseason. I think uh, we're trying to do something different. I think we're trying to move the ball more. I think we're trying to become a little bit more unpredictable. But we've also seen with our first half performances that that's not necessarily going to be the case every game. We are going to be inconsistent once again in the regular season. But I'm hoping those inconsistencies will be for a reason. I'm hoping it's because we're building for something bigger. If we see inconsistency all year with little to no improvement on the offensive end from preseason to the end of the season, that is a big concern. That's unacceptable for many people and that's something that we should not see. So I'm hoping that we don't see that. But of course, there's always room for everything, ladies and gentlemen. We may just see that. We may see the frustration of that as well. And I think a lot of people will be very upset if we do. But it is a possibility, so I thought I'd bring that to your attention. Those are the main key takeaways I have for the Chicago Bulls in terms of this preseason. I think everybody else played their role very well. Or again, maybe they're a little bit inconsistent and things like that. But for the most part, a relatively good preseason. Walking away with three wins, a very good win against Denver, very good win against the Bucks, a very competitive win against the Toronto Raptors and we even came very close to getting a 4-0 preseason record with the Pelicans game as well. There is negatives and we've expressed the negatives a lot in this video but there is a lot to take away and I guess that's kind of what preseason is all about as well. Learning your positives, learning your negatives and trying to take something away from it and I hope the Bulls have done that and we'll wait and see how good we can be in the regular season. The East looks like it's gotten better. The West looks like it's pretty much very competitive as well. This is not going to be an easy season for the Chicago Bulls. But if we see ourselves as a better team and we can prove we are a better team, we should be, in my opinion, one of the most dangerous teams in the league. But if we still kind of stagnate to where we were last year, no real effort on the defensive end, very stagnant on the offensive end, we are in big trouble. So it's time for the Chicago Bulls to pick the side that they want to be on and hopefully it's the winning side and hopefully we can walk away very positively out of the regular season. But it all starts against the Miami Heat. In the next video, I'm going to go through every single player and talk about their preseason. I'm not going to do it in this video just because I wanted to kind of do a key takeaways because the game reaction for the Bucks was extremely short. Couldn't really get much into it as I had people over. But next video, we'll talk from the very beginning, from Costa Santos de Cumpo, from uh, Javon Freeman Liberty, all the way until DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, and we'll talk all about how good their preseason was from my retrospective. And you can obviously let me know how you think everybody's preseason went as well. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Have a wonderful and safe day. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace. Thank you.